So I'm here in this forest today on a really cloudy, drizzly, wet, overcast day. And so the light's really got no direction because there's so much cloud cover and it's become misty in the forest. I think we're in the lower edges of a cloud even. So it can become hard to take photos in these conditions, definitely. But the thing to understand is where there's openings, whether it's to the side or above, we get light coming through. And that gives us directional lighting, even though it's a cloudy day, because the light is then funneled through those openings, either from the side of the forest or from gaps in the trees. And that gives us directional lighting, which is what we're after. We need to have directional lighting most of the time because it's going to give us something to look at. It's gonna give us some sort of visual interest in the picture. And we get that here. So I'm gonna show you what I mean now. So as you can see in this scene here, we've got the light coming down from above and it's dropping in and giving us some point of interest. And I'm using the path here. As I move around, you can see my framing. I'm gonna use this tree that's at the side and you can see this tree coming up here and over. It gives us a little bit of a framing spot as well. And we've got the path going through the picture. So that's going to be my composition. And I think it works because of this light coming through. The mistiness and the drizzle is catching the light as well. And it's giving it some direction coming through the picture. And I think that's going to be quite nice, especially once I've edited it a bit. So on overcast days like this, this is really the theme that I'm looking for. And I'm looking for clearings in the trees and I'm looking for spots where there's light coming in from the side to give us something to look at. It shapes the image for us. And that's like you see in movies, they add lights in in scenes like this to simulate that and to give them some direction and so on. Because if we just go into the forest and we just try and take pictures of things, it's going to be so flat, it will just look really boring. So the path, that I'm using in this picture helps gives us a way to look through the picture and move through the picture. We always view pictures as if we're walking through them or that we try to imagine ourselves in that landscape or in that picture in some way or another. And in forests where it's kind of chaotic and there's not necessarily lots to look at that we can make sense of, paths that we can find like this and that we're probably gonna be on anyway, give us some meaning and structure to the pictures that we're making. But it's really important that you understand the importance of lighting and how this light affects the picture. And that if we can bring in compositional elements like tree branches and tree, tree trunks even that create visual stops on the side of the image, we can make the whole thing tied together. Hello. Hello. Yes. <laughs> So what you can see down the end there, trees create an archway and then we've got other trees framing. So let's try and get this shot now. I'll focus on this tree that's further down. Just see if that turns into anything. I'm not convinced with this one. Now, I wasn't sure whether this picture was actually going to work out or not, but in the end I think it did and I quite like it. Now I also took this picture just about 10 meters along the path. And I think that this combines some of the elements that I was talking about a bit better. We see the path binding its way through the trees and I think that it just sets off the location a little bit better. And we've got the same thing again with the light pouring in from the right hand side from a gap in the trees, which gives us this lighting interest that we're after. Unfortunately, my GoPro 11 corrupted the file that was the recording of me shooting this picture. So I'm not able to show you that. So I'm sorry about that. Now I just want to mention quickly that I've got a new workshop coming out which is about composition and lighting with me going into much more detail about compositional techniques that I use in different scenarios and how I look at lighting and how I see light. If you subscribe to my newsletter you'll get the early bird discount. So you'll get a nice discount on this workshop and if you want to subscribe to that look in the link in the description so I can send you the email updates about the course and I can send you the discount code and I'll also send you discount codes for some of my presets and other workshops in the future as well. It's use your imagination. This is so important and this goes out throughout photography it's not just to do with forests it's to do with any photography that you do is that you can look at a picture and you can pick out the right bit it might not be the best shot ever but you need to be able to do that and you need to be able to do it in your head not just with a camera you need to be able to look at something scan and use your imagination your mind's eye and say if I took a picture of just that area that would be a shot 
And I think it's one of the defining things that separates photographers is the ability to just see a composition in the first place. I think so many photographers just walk past shots that they could get because they're waiting for something really big or grand or really obvious to hit them in the face. And I think everyone can do that. I don't think there's a skill in that. I think that you need to start training yourself and doing a challenge like this is really a good way to do it. Say, right, I'm gonna to go to the forest. It's a bad day for the weather, but I've got to come back with some shots and try and find things. And I suggest, this is one of the reasons why I think people should learn on a 50. It's 35, 35, 40, 55, you know, something middle range as a focal length. 50 is great because it's cheap and easy to get hold of, but it could be a 35 or equivalent or on a crop or a microfill third sensor. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is using a lens that gives you that middle sort of focal range. So you can start learning to see, to isolate bits of the picture and make shots that are truly yours. And I think prime lenses are perfect for that because they, they force you into that view already because as soon as you look through the viewfinder or the screen on the back of the camera you're forced into that crop so you're looking and seeing and you're starting to see it more and more and I still do this myself all the time you know I've been a professional photographer for a long time and I still shoot for myself I'm starting to take you guys along with me now like this but this is the sort of thing that I would I've got an hour free I will go and do something like this on my own a camera simple setup one battery one memory card, one prime lens, go out and shoot and get stuff because it forces you into seeing. And that is the big separator between photographers because when it's all said and done with all the pixel wars, blah, 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 and all the stuff that nobody really cares about, you know, all the stuff that doesn't actually make a real world difference. What matters is your vision. It's what can you see? What can you come up with? And how are you supposed to come up with a vision or a style or your ability to see things if you never practice it? If you just sort of say, yes, I will go out on the days where I need to shoot. And then you come back with stuff that maybe you're not 100% happy with. And it's no surprise, is it? Because you didn't put the work in. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm putting in the work because this isn't going to make me any money. But I also know as a professional photographer, I need to stay in the game through practice. I need to have that. I need to keep working at my craft, at my skill set, at my artistic vision to try and make sure I'm not losing those skills. I'm not just settling into sort of mundane work. And thanks to my GoPro 11, the next section was also corrupted. I've not had this on GoPro before, but I'm afraid this is the end of the video here. Remember, if you want to sign up for the new workshop that's coming out and get the early bird discount and get in nice and early, the link is in the description down below and you can sign up for that. If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment and subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.